Hello there! I wanted to make a quick video about how I relate to Will Byers in Stranger Things. Mainly actually from season 2, but I was watching season 4 of Stranger Things and then I was just re-watching the earlier seasons because I was bored and I realised how much I actually relate to Will Byers as a person who has PANS symptoms, so I wanted to explain that a little bit. Now if you don't know what PANS is, it stands for Paediatric Acute Onset Neuropsychiatric Syndrome. It's said to affect around 1 in 200 people and it can cause a wide variety of neurological and psychiatric symptoms such as OCD, tics, food restrictions, rage attacks, seizures, personality changes and more. So in season 2 of Stranger Things, Will Byers experiences these episodes where he sort of goes back to the upside down and the doctor that he sees tells his parents, well his mum and Hopper, that it is a trauma response. However, later on they actually realise it's not and they realise that it's actually something physical. And that's similar to what a lot of people with Pans and Pandas experience. A lot of people with Pans and Pandas are originally misdiagnosed with a mental health condition despite the fact that Pans is actually usually autoimmune. So a lot of people with Pans can probably relate to that. The doctor's saying that it's probably a mental health issue, possibly from trauma, and then it actually turns out that it's something physical. Another way in which I relate to Will Byers and Stranger Things is that when he is in those episodes where he's in the Upside Down, he's terrified and he feels trapped. You know, that's exactly how it feels to be in a Pans Pandas flare. You feel trapped, you're scared because you're losing yourself, you're losing control, things have changed, things seem different, you're different. It definitely has that sense of helplessness there. Interestingly as well, in season 2 of Stranger Things, they say that what Will has is similar to a virus and that's interesting as well because pans can be triggered by viral infections, so that's another bit that some people with pans may be able to relate to as well. In season 2, when Will Byers is possessed by the Mind Flayer, he has an extremely terror-stricken look, and that terror-stricken look is actually said to be a symptom of pans and pandas. It's been listed as a symptom by the Pandas Physicians Network, and that's something that we may experience quite a lot. We may have that terror-stricken look on our face. Interestingly as well, when Billy is cursed slash possessed by the Mind Flayer in physical form in season 3, I think that was, his pupils get really, really dilated. And interestingly as well, we can kind of relate to that because dilated pupils are a symptom of pans and pandas too. Our pupils make it absolutely massive, not necessarily all the time, but in bad episodes that can happen. Interestingly, Will Byers as well, when he's in those episodes, when he's in the Upside Down, hey, his eyes appear to sort of flicker. It's as if he's having seizures where his eyes flicker and flutter and when his eyes move to the back of his head almost. Some people with pans pandas can have seizures. I don't have seizures though, thankfully, but I do have tics that are actually similar to that. I have tics where I'll just freeze and keep doing that, but I know for me it's a tick and not a seizure because I can suppress it temporarily and it has a certain sensation that tells me that it's a tick. Interestingly, in season two, Will Byers' mum is the one to first of all realise that it's not a trauma response and the person to actually save him. And that's actually interesting as well because with pans and pandas, it's often the parents <laughs> who realise that there's something more going on, who realise that the child may have been misdiagnosed and who take action to get their child to see a specialist and who actually <laughs> sort of are the ones to help find the most answers. In season two of Stranger Things, it's quite sad because Will sort of forgets who the people are around him and pans and pandas can also cause memory issues and thankfully my memory issues were never that bad but I still related a little bit because at times it felt like things which were once obvious to me I didn't know the answer to anymore, so certain questions I didn't know the answer to anymore, um, but thankfully it didn't get so severe for me that I didn't know the people around me, thankfully I always knew the people around me, but I still kind of lost the ability to answer certain questions which I would have been able to answer easily previously. What's interesting as well is Will Byers has a sense that other people don't have. He can sense sort of Vecna and the Demogorgons and the Mind Flayer. He feels it in the back of his neck, but I have something similar and I don't feel negative entities like that. But I do, ha I have had a sense that other people don't have. Um, it's called a phantom tick. Phantom ticks are where you feel an out of body sensation. So I used to feel the out of body sensations clumping around door handles, floating around attached to furniture. 
things like that and it would fuel my triticosity rituals so I kind of relate in that sense to having a sense that other people don't have and it's very difficult to explain to people as well what an outer body sensation actually feels like because most people can't feel things outside of their own nervous system. When Will Byers is coming out of his possession from the Mind Flayer, he sort of quickly goes into the mindset of the Mind Flayer and the Mind Flayer takes over his body and he ends up sort of holding his mum's neck and that's a very sad, very distressing scene. But I also relate to that because rage attacks can be a symptom of pans and pandas and in rage attacks some people are unfortunately quite aggressive and violent and we can't really control that, we don't choose it, it's not reflection of who we are as a person. And that's kind of why I relate because he's doing it but it's not really him, that's what it's sort of like in a rage attack you do these things that you don't want to do but it's not you doing it, you feel out of control. You feel like you are controlled by someone else or something else. Interestingly and sadly, people in the Pans Pandas community may also relate to some aspects of Vecna's victims in season 4. Now thankfully we don't die, Pans Pandas rarely kills people um, and definitely doesn't end in the way that the Vecna's victims lives end. Hey, But some of the traits can be similar, for example, nightmares. The kids who were sort of cursed by Vecna had nightmares. You would see Max Mayfield having those nightmares and those can be part of Pans Pandas as well. Nightmares can be a symptom, as can hallucinations. Thankfully I don't have the hallucinations part, or at least if I did they're not very much. But that is also something that was portrayed in Stranger Things, which is also something that people with Pans Pandas can experience. It's thought that around 25% of people with Pans Pandas have hallucinations and it can be very terrible for the people who have it. And also, Vecna's victims also had seizures, and that is also a potential symptom of pans and pandas. But in pans and pandas, they are usually non-epileptic seizures. What's interesting as well is that in season two, when they are trying to communicate with Will, um, but they can't sort of let him know where he is, he sort of loses the ability to speak, and he starts tapping Morse code instead of speaking verbally because he can't really speak verbally, and that's when he sort of tells them to close the gate. Through that method but it's really interesting as well because when you have pans pandas it's a rare symptom but some people actually lose the ability to speak with pans pandas so it's rare but it can happen and that can be an area where people relate to as well you can tell that will byers also has night terrors and nightmares in season two where he sort of wakes up covered in sweat again symptom of pans pandas so people may relate to that as well and interestingly Heat intolerance isn't really listed as a symptom of pans pandas, but I know quite a few people in the pans panda community who experience heat intolerance, but that may be due to co-occurring issues. But um, heat intolerance, I have that a lot. I cannot be in too much heat, otherwise I feel very weak and ill. I have to have the aircon on in the car to soothe me and make me feel better. And that's really interesting because in Stranger Things, Will Byers keeps saying he likes it cold, as in he's referring to the Mind Flayer. So I kind of relate to that as well, as in I need to be in the cool, the hot, makes me feel really ill and horrible. Interestingly, in season four, Vecna's victims have head pain, and head pain can occur in people with pans pandas as well, due to the brain inflammation. You can tell in season two, when Will Byers is sort of possessed by the Mind Flayer that his personality isn't the same, he becomes more aggressive and more angry and more afraid. And that's exactly how it can feel and seem when you have pans pandas, your personality changes, you can become kind of defiant, angry, sadder, more anxious, panicky. In season four of Stranger Things, Will Byers appears to have a more typical life and this is a good thing, this sort of gives hope that for some people, when they go through difficulties, sometimes they can eventually get back to a sort of normal routine and I kind of relate to that as well because meow, the same sort of thing has happened for me in the sense that I was very severely disabled for four years of my childhood but then in my sort of teenage years I started getting back to a normal routine and was not taking anything for granted that other people see as a normal part of life but I was able to do these things that other people do and it actually felt amazing, but I was getting back to a typical life, which was amazing. As well as this, you can see that in season four, Will Byers is extremely empathetic and compassionate. He seems very hurt when he sees Elle slash Jane getting bullied, and he seems to be encouraging her when she goes up to the front of the class to give her presentation about Hopper. 
he has become a very empathetic and compassionate person and I do feel like my experiences have made me a very empathetic and compassionate person. I don't think I would be as empathetic, compassionate, defensive and understanding and protective without experiencing the things I experience. So I kind of relate to that as well, how Will Byers has developed. When Will Byers says to his brother Jonathan in season two about how he doesn't like people treating him like he's different, I relate to that as well. I relate to that because a lot of the time people with differences and disabilities are treated in a sort of patronizing manner and this patronizing manner can be really annoying because people might speak to us as if we don't fully understand what's going on or they may just treat us as if we're like a five-year-old when we're not and this can be quite bothersome and can also affect our own confidence. It's almost as if Pans is this sort of shadow monster that is possessing us in a sense. Now Pan's Pandas isn't possession, but it has been referred to before as exorcist syndrome because the way it looks and feels it can be similar to that. Will Byers also has in season two less independence than his peers. His mum makes his brother take him to school and to trick or treating for example and I think quite a few of us with Pan's Pandas and other conditions can relate to this. There is an element of loss of independence because other people may need to come with us places to keep us safe. When Will Byers in season two is in one of his episodes where he's sort of in the upside down but also kind of in his own world, the shadow monster chases him down the school corridors. This happens in chapter three of season two Strange Things and when he runs down the corridor he sort of gives the impression that he's exhausted, he is trapped, he's terrified and that's exactly how it can feel to have pans or pandas. When Will Byers is trying to explain what the shadow monster feels like, he says it's sort of like a feeling, but he seems like he's having difficulty describing it, like others wouldn't understand, and that's what it can feel like to describe pans pandas, because you have a feeling that stays with you, and sometimes you can describe it as a feeling like depression or anxiety, or fear or terror, but in some instances it's something that you can't really put words to. There are many instances where I've had phantom tics and other sort of pronometry urges, sensory tics, that words can't fully describe. When he cries saying he felt it everywhere, that's sort of how it was like when I had the pronometry urge to tick all over my body. My body was filling with pressure as it would accumulate and it would come out as irritability and rage attacks because it was so uncomfortable, this physical sensation all over me and bottling up inside my body. When Will Byers cries and says he just wants it to be over, that's how many people with Pans Pandas feel when they're in a flare and that can be heartbreaking because there are many kids who beg their parents to make it stop with Pans and Pandas but treatment is hard to come by as a lot of the Pans Pandas treatments, they're difficult to get on the NHS in the UK and it can be difficult in some places in America to get them because they may not be covered by the insurance companies. A lot of people in the UK, for example, have to go into the private sector, but this is incredibly expensive and not everyone could afford it. So some people are left to suffer in this hell. It's interesting as well because a lot of people with Pans Pandas have to be quite careful of what hospital they go to because some hospitals are better suited for people with Pans Pandas than others. Some hospitals do not have specialists who understand Pans and Pandas. So some people may have to go to see a specialist doctor and if they have to be hospitalised or something then they may have to be careful as to which hospital they choose to get admitted to. It's a little bit like how in Stranger Things Will Byers sees that doctor <laughs> in the government lab at Hawkins lab rather than going to a typical hospital.